May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, my rock and my salvation. Amen. By grace I'm saved. That is an excellent hymn. And when Jonathan chose that, he said, I can pick any hymn I wanted. And I said, that's perfect. Because that's really the crux of our messages for today. We have laws. We were talking, I talked with the children about that. We have laws that say what we can't do, but we also have laws that say what we can do. But we don't make much of those. But there are laws that say what we can do. And the first God, law that God gave us, the first commandment, thou shalt honor the Lord thy God with all thy might, with all thy heart, with all thy soul. We should love God first and him alone. And we have trouble with that, don't we? We have laws. Oh, my goodness. We, we have laws that it's important to keep these laws, but sometimes they don't really answer the problem. We have like a 25-mile-an-hour speed limit in school zones. Now, the lady that's driving through the school zone at 30 miles an hour, and but looking very carefully that no one, no little one runs out in front of her, is disobeying that law. But she is really obeying it because she's looking out for the children, and that's the purpose of that law. But the lady that's driving 20 miles an hour through that school zone but talking on her cell phone and drinking a cup of coffee and not really paying attention to anything except the fact that she's going only 20 miles an hour. She's obeying that law to the letter, but she's disobeying that law in that she's not paying attention to looking for children, which is the purpose of that law. And Jesus had that in our Old Testament lesson, Moses is telling the children of Israel that before they go into the land that God promised them, he was giving them all of God's law and telling them, reminding them of the fact that God has been caring for them all those 40 years that they wandered in the wilderness. And how many times did they forget? that God was taking care of them. They would go off and complain. They don't have this, and they don't have that, but their clothes were not wearing out. Their shoes did not wear out. They got fed every day, but they still complained. In our lesson for today, in the New Testament Epistle lesson, we're being told to put on the whole armor of God. We're being told that we need to remember that God is in control. God is in control, and he's here to help us no matter what is going on in our lives. Now, there's the one that's really excited about getting up here and finding out what's going on, and that's great. That's really great. But those of you that have seen me probably notice that I wear a pendant that says, put on the full armor of God. It just shows a, a cross, and it shows the armor of God. And I got that in the mail, and I thought, you know, this is a great thing to wear rather than just a cross. This has a message to say, and I was so pleased to see that it was our lesson for today, because that message is so important, that we put on that full armor of God, that we do, as I said before, that we not only go to the church, but we go to Bible classes, we read our Bible at home, we study it, 
we do everything we can to learn more about our Savior, Jesus Christ, and what he did for us, and more and more about God's great love for each one of us. And this is one thing that the Pharisees did not grasp all the time that Jesus was with, with them. He had his message of repentance and to remember that God was there with them, taking care of them. But they could consider only the laws that they had made. The people of Israel, the Pharisees particularly, the leaders of the church, had expanded God's Ten Commandments to something like 1,600 laws. And they felt that they were right with God because they kept all of those laws. They were perfect as far as they were concerned in the sight of God. And their laws extended from how to wash your hands before you ate, how to wash your utensils that you used, all these weird little things that are really unimportant as far as our Christian life is concerned. But the Pharisees believed that they were right with God because they kept all of these man-made laws to the letter. And they complained because Jesus' disciples did not do that. How dare they sit down and eat without going through the ceremonial washing of their hands? Now, you and I, when our kids were growing up, we made sure they washed their hands before they ate. But once in a while, they would sneak by without. And it was no big deal. It was not something that was going to make the house fall down. But they knew that they were supposed to do that. Just like they knew they weren't supposed to run around in the house and knock things over. They knew that. They, have all these, they had all these rules, and they knew about them. The people of Israel knew that the Pharisees had all these rules, and they tried to keep them. But you and I know that God gave us ten basic rules, the Ten Commandments, and we cannot keep one of them to the letter of the law. We cannot keep any one of them. And we know it. And because we know we are sinners, we know that we need forgiveness from our sins. And we have received that through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Pharisees were a bunch of self-righteous hypocrites. And Jesus called them that, right to their face. We have a lot of people in this day and age that are self-righteous hypocrites. They think that everything they do everything that they should as far as God is concerned, so therefore they are right with God and the rest of us are really bad because we don't keep all those rules that they think are necessary and important to be right with God. Every church has someone in the church that works really hard, that does everything they can. Do they do that because they're trying to please God and let God know how good they are? Or are they doing it because of the love they have in their heart? The love that God has given them and they want to pass on to those around them. I pray that it's because they love God and they love the people around them and that's why they do the things that they do around the church. As I said, God gave us the Ten Commandments, and we cannot keep them. We cannot keep a single one of them. But what we do, because we love God and because we know that he loved us first, we know that we should try as hard as we can to keep all those commandments. 
And the basic commandment as far as Jesus was concerned was love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Do you love yourself? That's the first thing to start out with. Do you love yourself? And the answer should be, yes, I love myself because I know God loves me and that I am wonderful, I am chosen, I am part of his kingdom. And so therefore, I want to pass on that love to all those around me. And that's not by being grouchy. That's not by saying, no, when somebody asks you if you can help with something. I have a friend. Ooh, I'm sorry. I have a friend that is the deacon in the Catholic Church right down the street from me. And his priest went on a vacation. And so, therefore, he was kind of stuck with making sure that everything happened during the week. All their weekly services and all their classes he said, I cannot find anyone to help me. No one wants to help. He said, they send in a priest on Sunday morning to have the Sunday morning service and to have a sermon. And the rest of the week, it's up to me to try and find somebody to take care of things and to keep things going until next week when the priest comes back from his vacation. Do you have trouble in this congregation? finding people that will help. And I would say, no, that's not the case from when I walked in the door this morning and everyone that I met was willing to help, trying to make sure that I was comfortable and that everything was right. It's great to be in that kind of congregation. And I have to say that there are times when I wish I would have chosen this congregation when I left Trinity rather than St. Paul's in Hoka because I love the liturgy. I love the sung liturgy. I love the way things, you know, I had a friend come in the door today and he says, I miss your bulletin. He said, I always knew exactly what was going to be in there. I knew where to look for something. He said, and I've been going to different churches and everyone is different. And so you have to be really careful and read it through to make sure that you're in, at the right place at the right time. I'm old enough, needless to say, that I don't like to change. And none of us really like to change. But in this world that we live in, things are changing always. And in Jesus' time, Things were changing. Christ came to change things. But the Pharisees would not change. You and I have made changes over our years. We've made quite a few probably. When we got married, when we had children, when we moved from one job to another, these are all changes that we had to make, and we made them. And we made the best of them. And this is what Jesus was trying to get off to his disciples, one of the things, is that when things change, you change with them. And that's the way you grow, by changing with them. You and I have grown in Christ. And that's proven by the fact that you're here this morning, that you're here to hear his word, to sing his praise. We have grown in Christ. And the thing is, how do we let others have this privilege that you and I have, this privilege of serving our God? And I think I hit it on when I said before, when we go out, we don't go out as a grouch. We go out as a happy individual. And those around us can ask us, how come you're so happy? And we're happy to say, because I have Christ in my heart. And
man, I know that my sins are forgiven. I know that by grace, by God's love, I am saved. For I know, John 3, 16 and 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Thank you, Bible. If I would have forgot the words, I could have got them. I didn't mean to embarrass you. But that's great to see that someone knew it so well that he wanted to say it right along with me. And that's great. That is the thing that we're looking for, our growth in Christ. Knowing things about God, knowing about God's great love for each one of us, and knowing that through this love, we have the hope of eternal life with him. 